Ooh. What's up, what's up, what's up? Welcome back. Uh, today we're working on a custom file system to manage my life. So the idea is uh, I have like lots of small tasks that I have to like that I want to accomplish. The way that like uh, this like streaming thing is working out is that I kind of need to like break down everything that I want to do into like small two hour ish chunks of work uh, that like I'm confident that I can accomplish in some way. Um, because like it's makes it the YouTube video just kind of like writes itself in that case. There's like a nice little story. I want to be able to like justify to you guys why I want to work on stuff. So uh, I need to break things up into like chunks of small work that have like a nice little package story to them. Um, and so what that ends up doing to my work is that it ends up kind of making it uh, like a chain of small tasks um, that need to be kind of flushed out and are easy for me to lose track of and like keep like all the state in my head. So I need some way to like manage that for me, right? Like I want, um, right now what I do is I kind of just like the day, a day or two before I'll like say, here's what I'm going to do tomorrow. Here's what I'm going to do the next day. But sometimes I find myself like racking my brain for like, what was the next thing I wanted to do again? What are my options for things that I want to do? Um, and so what I'm kind of thinking is, uh, I want a way for me to organize these thoughts, um, maybe store relationships between them, right? This thing has to happen before that thing. This thing is related to this thing, but not doesn't, the order doesn't really matter. Um, you know, like this sequence might be nice for stream. This is stuff that I need to like package up to do off stream. Like there's a bunch of like relationships and like states that things can be in. Um, and I want to kind of like visualize them. So I kind of want like, you know, I might have like my like image to text project and I might know that like one of the things that I want to do is like uh, run it in Rust, port it to Rust. And I might want to like after that do like run it in Wasm on the browser. I might want to like work on like SIMD. Both of these things can't happen before I work with it in Rust. And I also might want to know like over here that I want to do like uh, discover colors. Uh, but then I might realize that, like, oh, shit, before I do that, I kind of have to do something like uh, do it in black and white. Discover black and white correctness. Black and white. And before that, I might want to do, like, I don't know, I might want to, like, see if I can uh, predetermine the best shape before doing uh, and pick a color after. And a, But I might also want to experiment with, like, doing the colors and the shapes together. But there's, like, this, like, tree of events that needs to happen. And each one is, like, a small stream. And I want to, like, see this sequence. And specifically, I might want to see, like, here are all of the next branches that I can look down. Um, and I want to, like, quickly see what does that unlock. And, like, does this, like, you know, if I have, like, a deep branch, I might want to see, like, oh, there's, like, seven things in a row that I can do here. And I don't have to worry about what I'm going to do next for the next week. Um... And when I look at, like, existing ticket trackers, like, I've kind of used, like, Trello, I've used Jira, um, you know, software bullshit. Um, they don't really seem to, like, provide what I want. Um, and they also provide a lot of stuff that I don't want, right? I don't really want, like, the heaviness of Jira. I don't really want, like, the way that Trello forces me to organize my stuff. I just don't, like, really want that. I want, like, something that, like, is tuned to me. And I think that I can write something like that pretty quickly. Um... So what I'm thinking is I want to like have files on my disk. I really like the like concept of just being like able to open a ticket in like Vim, edit it in Markdown, easy peasy, right? Like basically like my tickets end up being like what's on the right, right? Uh, and I like, I like this feel. Um, and I just want a way to visualize relationships easily. And so I'm kind of thinking like, well, sim links are a lot like relationships, right? I have like colors is blocked by black and white, I could just make a sim link between these guys. Um, but the problem there is that I would need to make a two, two directional sim link. And if I was just thinking about this, I'm like, I'm just going to stick these on my disc and maintain sim links. Um, there, it seems like there's like a pretty large risk of things getting out of sync, right? I can imagine a scenario where like I'm halfway through, uh, one connection and like I delete one sim link and I don't delete the other. So like now one says that he's blocked by something else, but the other guy doesn't say that he blocks him. And so I want like a database of links that is hard to fuck up, right? And I want to visualize those cleanly. So I think maybe like a custom fuse file system that is like 
a view into a bunch of just like simple markdown files with like stored relationships in a database. I think that's like a lot like what I want. Um, and I like John kind of generated this example uh, without actually like writing the application. I just kind of like wrote a little script to like kind of show what my data layout was going to be like to make sure that I like liked what I saw. So kind of the idea is that I have like a flat list of files or folders, each where they're just like the ID of a task. Each task is going to have some sort of like content to it, as well as like some relationships. They might say like, I'm part of the stream OS project, or like I'm part of the image to text neural network project. And I might want to like go into each project and see like, oh, so here are like my options of projects to work on. And in this project here are all of like his children, right here are all of like the tasks that I'm thinking of doing. And I might want to like write custom filters to say like, okay, what about the ones that have no blocked by trait on them. Now, all of a sudden I have these like, oh, here are the next three things that I could work on right now if I don't have to worry, like if I don't do any pre-work. Um, and if I want to see like what kind of like, uh, what, what that like unlocks, I can like run tree on my file system and just see like, oh, this guy blocks this guy, blocks this guy. So I've got like a chain of events here as well as like this chain of events here. Um, and I kind of like the way that looks and feels and it kind of like work, like matches up with what I with what I want. So, all of that to say, today I want to make a file system that kind of does this, right? But in a in a way that like is automatically handled by some some application. Uh, and so I think the like plan of action is we're gonna like figure out like what the fuck does it take to make a file system? I don't actually really know. I feel like it should be easy. Um, but I don't actually know that. We might find out um, if we start working with Fuse and it's like absolute shit that this isn't like worth doing and we might decide that it's too hard. Um, if we find out that like making a Fuse file system is like as, you know, reasonable, then we can start like building out like what does our like storage for this thing look like um, in a way that like, you know, I want like a good backup strategy. I don't want to like worry about like data. I want like my data to be migratable later, stuff like that. Um, maybe start like building out our application um, in like the, you know, the most bare bones form possible, um, shove some initial data in there and then, uh, try to present that data in a file system in some way, right? So I'm not trying to get to like the end of this day, but I'm, I do think that by the end of today, we should be able to at least visualize something in a database on a file system. And that'll give us like a good launching point for, for the rest of this. Um, yeah. So I think that's what we want to do. And uh, let's just kind of jump in. Graph DB use case. I don't actually know what that is. What the hell? I was just going to use a little SQLite database, but I'm curious now what the hell is Graph DB? Graph DB stores nodes and relationships instead of tables or documents. Data is stored just like you sketch ideas on a whiteboard. Uh, I think. There's a possibility that this is what I want, but I'm not gonna like spend the time right now to like research a new database. I'm pretty sure that I can get what I want pretty easily with just like SQLite and files on the disk. So I'm gonna go that way, but that doesn't mean that this is a bad answer, just that uh, I don't wanna look at it right now. <laughs> uh, okay. So let's make a Fuse file system. Um, where is this guy? LibFuse? LibFuse is probably what I'm looking for. Reference implementation of Linux file system in user space, blah, blah, blah. Okay, cool. This is what I this is what I'm looking for. And they have examples. And we can just kind of pop open their hello world and see what we can glean from it. Um Okay, so maybe what we want to do is we'll probably want to like follow along in some way. Um so let's get in here and start up a project. So I guess I need some environment of some sort. So I'm just gonna quickly yoink my Nix environment from another project and then quickly adapt it. Um, we have nothing but libfuse and that's probably all we want for now. Probably. Um, okay. Nope, not libfuse. Maybe it's just Fuse. Maybe it's just Fuse. I guess we could always just search and find out. Or we could just randomly guess, wait a long time, and find out if it's right. Okay, that seems right. 
And so I assume that everything is like from fuse.h. So let's just like quickly bang out something's like include fuse.h. Oh my god, fucking ts install c? Is that how this works? Reinstall, yes. Please fucking unbreak yourself. Okay, nvim. Oh my god. Oh my god. nvim test.c. There we go. Okay. Uh, and then we can do like an int main void and just return zero and see if this like fucking compiles. Uh, why? What the fuck? Um, please. So he's just saying like, please include file offset bit 64 to your compile flags. If you know that I have to do that, why don't you just set it yourself? What the fuck? Okay, whatever. Well, uh, okay, let's. Let's see, can I jump to definition? I need clang D. I need my indexer. Uh, which I think comes from like clang tools? Uh, I think? We'll see. We'll see, we'll see, we'll see. If, okay, that seems right. And we can go into test.c and jump to fuse.h. Oh my god, what the fuck is going on? Uh, okay. Uh, Fuse common, please add this. Dude, I don't know what that, like, giant red blob is, but man is... <laughs> I might actually have to read it in a second. Um, this interface uses 64-bit off T. I guess... I don't understand. Do they do that here? Examples? Is there, like, comp like a make file in here? Make file? No. How the fuck do you build these examples? How do you build these examples? Build. Um, do they, okay, so they do just hard code that same thing in here? That's, like, wild. I don't really understand why, but whatever, okay, sure. So they're just saying, maybe it's just, like, a forced acknowledgement to me, the user, that I'm working with 64-bit instead of 32-bit, and just, like, they're telling me, hey, like, don't fuck that up, I guess. It's odd. File offset, what was it? File offset... It's 64. All right. It's really fucking weird, but whatever. Uh, why? Oh, it's underscore here. There we go. Okay, so that compiles, um, which means that the library is like probably available. Um, can we like do something with it? What do they do in there? Oops, I don't want hello too. I want probably hello is what I want. Null also seems interesting. Null, I assume, just does nothing. Uh, okay, so it looks like... It looks like what they do is they, like, define a set of operations similar to what you would see, like, inside the Linux kernel. They have... They only here have to define a small amount of them. So they have open, read... Fuck, where'd it go? Uh, I fucked up. I clicked on something and GitHub just, like, jumped me there, which is kind of... I don't know why I did that. Um, so the read, open, read directory, get adder, and init. Okay. So probably we can just start doing the same thing. Then they like construct some arguments. Uh, default values for something. Parse the options. Check if they typed help then it looks like you kind of structure your whole application as something that like runs the fuse main loop and you just inject your operations and I guess your operations define what's going to happen. Sure. Okay. Reasonable, reasonable, reasonable. So uh, let's say we'll just copy all of this and where, why is there options here? Oh, their options are some global. Okay, I don't really, we don't need that. We don't need that for now. Um, Which means here we probably, like, can we just pass null to those? Null ops is equivalent to ops array containing a single m marker. A null args is equivalent to an empty argument vector. Null ops, null proc is equivalent to a processing function always returning one. What the fuck is a processing function? 
Oh my god, what is it bitching about here? Auto commands, there's probably just like deal open. Oh, okay, so every once in a while I like update my system and because like I'm using Nix, uh, my lib stood C++ is in some like fucked spot. Uh, and so if I have anything that's like runtime compiled, then all of a sudden uh, it can't find this stuff anymore, which is kind of annoying because it like links to a libstud C++ that like went away. Uh, so it looks like that was like something LSP related. Can I just go into like... Oh, it's so annoying. Maybe we'll just ignore it. Maybe we just ignore it for now because it seems like nothing's like really that fucking broken. It looks like this is coming from tree sitter again. Tree sitter LSP. Can I just like TS install LSP? Is it LSP one of the options here? Uh, whatever. Whatever. It's fine. If, if it's just syntax highlighting, it doesn't fucking matter. Can we just like disable? Can we disable tree sitter entirely? No. Fuck. Okay, whatever. Uh, what was I doing? I was trying to figure out why. Uh, what these options and proc are. Proc is the processing function, but what does that do? What it what the like okay, can I jump to oh here we go. Processing function. This function is called if option did not match anything, argument, blah blah blah. Okay, so like there's like if I want to run some code to parse arguments, but I don't give a shit about that. Okay. So we just go uh null null null. We have no options on a thing. Uh, we don't care about this like extra dash dash help behavior. And now we need to like define some operate operations. Vim tree sitter stop. Thank you. Thank you. That's helpful. <laughs> uh, Lua vim tree sitter stop. There you go. Thank you. Uh, okay, so we need to define like some operations. So let's start by just defining nothing and see what happens. Um, too many arguments to function call. Expected three have four. Uh, what the fuck? Uh, okay, so you jumped here. Wow, it's still happening. Fuck. Oh, whatever. Whatever. We'll live. We'll live. Fuse main. So, argc argv op user data, and I'm passing argc argv op user data. So why is it complaining? Ah. Uh, if fuse use version is old, they use like some compatibility later. Wild. Okay, so these guys at the top are saying fuse use version 31. And so I'm assuming that it's just like, if I have like an old project, um, then I update my libfuse. I want it to still compile, but they wanted to like add new features. So they added this like define. Sure. Sure. Whatever. It doesn't matter. Um, Looks like it compiles now, but I need to link fuse, libfuse. Okay, so that runs. And can I, like, say, what the fuck do you expect from me? Uh, so I just run test mount point. All right. Um, and I think I've seen... Uh, we'll see, we'll see. Make dir test mount. Test mount. Arm dir test mountain. Don't want that one. And let's run test on test mount. Okay. Ah, uh, okay. So the mount works, and just probably every single function is unimplemented, and it'll probably say this every fucking time. Um, so that makes sense. Uh, how do I deduce what needs to be done next? I think I've seen uh, that you can mount stuff foreground. Oh, and debug and debug. Okay, let's try let's try passing passing that debug flag and see what happens. So I think I U mount test mount if this is consistent with other fuse file systems. Yeah, so if I run test test mount and then I type mount, I do see that that is mounted, so that's kind of cool. So test dash D test mount, is it gonna tell me like Ah, okay. And if I try to like LS in there. Aha! Nice, 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 nice. So they're going to tell me if I do that, if they say like, hey, someone called get adder and we return negative 38. So that means that I can just like, like implement get adder and see what happens. 
Uh, so I can maybe jump here and say, what is the get adder function signature? And I also don't really know what it does. Uh, but we'll figure that out in a second. Hello, get adder. So I guess before we do anything, um, can we just say return return zero? Uh, what are like the inputs here? How do I find that out? Probably I go here, and he says get file attributes similar to stat st dev and st block size fields are ignored. St ino field is ignored except for use if the use ino mount option is given. Okay, so similar to stat. I guess is means that that's where we find out what the arguments are. If I like uh, man to stat, uh, we have path name and stat buff as the input. So that does match here, which makes sense. So here we can say that we have the path and here we have the stat buff. And what if we just like print F hello or get etter called or path. And in this language, you have to put a new line at the end of everything. Printf's not defined, so you include studio, studio.h. And we can GCC compile our thing. Test dash d test mount. LS test mount. And we do see get adder called for slash. Okay. Okay. So it looks like we can we can just probably start implementing our first thing. Uh, we can also look at what they did. So they return e no entity as in like file doesn't exist, I guess, in most cases. But then they say, oh, if we get path one, we say directory with uh, 0755 as the mount uh the like file permissions i would guess is what that is and st and link two i don't know what st and link is so can we do man to stat and look at the st and link number of hard links oh okay so how many people are using this guy why two why two they do two for directory one for file i don't know why is flashing white web pages legal in your country? I'm so sorry. <laughs> You're just like in bed in the dark. It's just like, oh, oh. <laughs> sorry, 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 sorry. Um, what we can do is we can clone this guy and then we won't have to alt tab to this <laughs> over and over and over again. Uh, all right, long time to see. Hello, hello. Hello, hello, hello. Welcome back. Um, okay, what, what is this thing called? Libfuse? Okay. And we can go back to the examples here. And we were looking at... Hello. Uh, okay, so we wanted to s see st and link 2. There must be some reason for that. Um, actually, here's what we're going to do. We're going to exit over here. In our Vim window, we're going to just open... Uh, what is this thing called? Libfuse examples hello. Then... We have this guy, we can open up a new window here, and man to stat, and look at st and link. Yeah, uh, okay, whatever, that's fine. We will ignore it for now. Jeffo, I think end links to is because dot and link to slash and dot dot must have link to slash, not quite sure though. Oh, I see, so you have like multiple folders pointing to the same spot. I would think that it also just doesn't matter. I don't, there, I'll try just always, like, just not setting it and see what negative effects that has. It probably doesn't fucking matter. Probably. Um, okay, so let's say that we have, like, let's just, like, add some, let's say that this is a directory. The root thing is a directory. So I guess we'll just, uh, st stat buff, uh, we'll set the mode to sifter. With 0755, that makes sense as well. Does this mean octal? Uh, octal numbers C. Octal numbers in C. Oh, wait, is this here? This is the same. What a crazy decision. 
by the way. You put a zero in front of your number, and it's just base eight? Why? 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 Why don't you? Why wouldn't you specify like an like a lowercase o or something for octal? That's you know, <laughs> like it just it seems crazy that I'm supposed to just know that, but uh, that's fine. Oh, was I flashbanging you again? I forgot. Sorry. <laughs> uh, okay, sure. So we're just gonna say that the thing is a directory, no matter what, and then we can run our thing in debug and uh, ls test mount and we get an input output error now why maybe yeah, my return code isn't right return on ver on success zero is returned on error negative one is returned okay so i return zero here i say it's a directory oh i'm these guys are mem setting zero. Forgot to compile, I think. That would also do it. Uh, I should do this mem set though, probably. Include string dot h. Uh, stat buff. And uh, dot slash test, and we run with test, and then we ls test mount. Okay, cool. So now we have reading directory test mount not implemented. They, this calls open and read dir, and the error is coming from read dir. So I guess open dir probably has some sort of like automatic implementation. Um, and read dir probably is what we need to do next. Uh, so here, I think that they had in their example just a read dir function. Nice. Um, and we just have to define the same thing. I don't want this to be an indent. Uh, what type of file system is it? I see it's meant to be used on Linux. Uh, yeah, so the idea is we just want a user space file system that like is basically a view into a database of files with like custom links, essentially. So it's just supposed to like organize uh, the, the links to files in the same way that a database in the, is holding them. Um, okay. So we implement reader. Um, and we go like this, and I guess we need to look at what these parameters are. So read dir, reads a directory, supersedes the old getter and phrase new applications to use this. I'm a new application, so I will use it. File system may choose between two modes of operation. Read dir implementation ignores the offset parameter and passes zero to the filter function's offset. The filter function will not return one unless an error happens. So the whole directory is read in a single read dir operation. Ah, I see. Oh, I see. So, like, there could be a world where somebody only wants to read, like, half of the directory in some way. Uh, the other option is to track outside. So, I'll just do the one thing, because I don't want to worry about it. Uh, we need to get the parameter names here, so... That's odd that this just doesn't tell me what they are, but I guess we can see... Uh, we can see what they do in the example. I'm imagining MMAP on a 20 gigabyte binary file. I think what I'm going to do is I'm probably going to store each file that I care about in like some folder. And a lot of the fuse operations will just be like pass throughs to those files or folders. Haven't really decided yet. And then I'm just going to like construct sim links around to different things based off what I see in my SQLite database. That's probably what this is going to end up looking at, but I haven't really. I haven't really thought it all the way through. Okay, so he says it's path, buff, filter, or filler. Path, buff, filler, offset, uh, info. Okay. Uh, what is... Use file info. Information about open files. I see. So this will tell me, like, if somebody, uh, mm, like, what flags they open the file with. So I guess if this is, like, if they open this as readable or writable, I would know that. I probably can just ignore all of this. File handle. Yeah, I don't really give a shit about any of that. So they also just ignored file info there, so I can do that. 
void info. I don't care about offset because the documentation said that I can just ignore it if I want to. And then they call the filler for each thing in there, in, in the directory. I see, I see, I see, I see. So if we call like filler buff test and test two and test three with some arguments, what are the arguments? They are buff, name, stat buff, and offset. I see. So these are like the file attributes for the thing. But if they didn't request any, then we don't need to pass any? In what case would this not be null? Um, I guess maybe, maybe I want to like alter it in some way. No, I'm, I'm missing. Some. Oh, I see. I could like feed in a particular set of information about the file like if it's if it's a file or a folder then i can put that into the step of probably yeah 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 i see so let's let's just like make a dir directory stat buff and a file stat buff and we can pass those in for if something should be a file or a folder um if you change your mind, do you might have to delete your code, all your code and change your architecture. What makes you think it's better to code now instead of working on design up front waterfall stuff? Oh, I just, uh, I'm, uh, for myself, I'm quite quick to write code and, uh, it's hard to know what your constraints are going to be until you get there. So what, what I generally do is I just try to like get something so that I can like get a feel for what I need and what I don't need. And it's easy to, as long as you like write your code in a way where it's not like locking you in to some decision, then it's easy to switch things later, right? Like it's not, it's, I think like any time I've like sat down before trying something and like decided like, this is exactly what I'm gonna do. Like, you know, that doesn't work well because I don't know what I don't know, right? So you have to kind of like poke and prod before and sometimes sometimes the poking and prodding ends up being like writing a prototype and then throwing it away and then writing your proper design doc but also like you know when you're working by yourself who needs a design doc right like the design doc is usually to get buy-in from other people at your company of like 400 people and it's like i don't know i'm just me it doesn't fucking matter <laughs> uh basically if i understand it correctly fuse extracts some functionality of the fs subsystem of the kernel into user space so every read and write request jumps up to user space and there your implementation does yeah that sounds right does its thing before returning to the kernel. That sounds right to me. Um, okay, so let's say that we wanted to like say that test and test two are directories and test three is a file. We should be able to say that we can make like a file stat buff is struct stat star this. No, not no no star here. Yeah, and we zero him out initially, and then we just say file stat buff st mode is equal to s what are my options here i have dir oh my god <laughs> uh that's fucked um <laughs> let's look at the stat man page again man to stat uh so somewhere they have s i have dir and they'll just show me what the other options are here we go block device character device directory fifo sim link regular file so the first thing is gonna be regular with permissions 644. And this needs to be like this. Oops, I don't know how this ended up like this. So file stat buff is this, and then we'll make a directory stat buff, which is SIF dir with 755. Because directories have to be executable for some reason. I can never remember why, but I I think you can't you can't like list the contents of a directory unless it's marked as executable. But like, what a weird, <laughs> like, I don't, I'm not executing the directory, but sure, whatever. Um, okay, so this filler, when I stick stuff in the directory, one of the things that I pass in is this buffer. So I'm gonna say that test and test do should be directories uh, with no offsets. And they want these as pointers. And then here I want test3 to be a file. And here I wrote file instead of dir, which is a problem. And then at the end of this, I have to return something, presumably zero. 
and they, you can return some you can return like standard errors i guess in this case is reader ah this is like no reader read directory entry there is no definition of struct blah blah, blah. this is not the function you are interested in look at reader 3 okay aha okay so this is probably just a mirror of this guy uh but slightly different but because this f signature doesn't match but Probably the return codes are going to be the same. No, because the returns are pointers. All right. I don't really know how I'm supposed to... Like, where's the documentation for this? Someone's got to tell me what, like, my options are here. The filler functional return one. Is there, like, a return... You know, and like, how am I supposed to know that this is a valid return for this? I don't know. And we should probably figure that out. But for now, we won't. <laughs> we'll return, return zero. And we'll say that's good enough for now. Eventually, we'll have to figure that out. But we can. We're in discovery mode right now. So we should just keep discovering. Okay. So test, test mount, and, uh, down here we can ls test mount and we got test one test two and test three what i find interesting is test three is showing as a directory even though we marked them as a file um so maybe we also have to ma match that on the secondary get adder call probably what's happening is when i type ls he's like iterating the directory and then calling get adder on every single file we're actually seeing that here and so he's probably just overriding if they don't match he's just picking the later one or maybe he doesn't even know if he matched. He's only picking the later one. Which means that here, uh, we want to do something like, uh, Hey, hello, how's it going? Pretty good, how are you? Uh, so we want to do something like path, uh, stat buff for path. And we'll take in the path and the stat buff. And stat buff and we can just do like a little if letter here so if stir comp path is equal to zero okay this the root or stir comp path uh test is equal to zero or stir comp path <laughs> test two is equal to zero. We set this thing as a directory. Else we set it as a file, which should be sif reg with 644, not 755, and return zero. I guess this is just a void function. We don't care about, there's like no way this can fail. And then here we can call uh, stat buff for path path stat buff, and then we can do the same thing over here, where we have a stat buff. We just make it unconditionally, and uh, we can just say here what stat buff for path test stat buff. And then here, no matter what, we pass in stat buff, but we fill the contents of it based off of the directory. So test two, test three, and hopefully that makes sense. Hopefully, I don't know, we'll see. I'm just trying to get something. Okay, sure. Let's compile again, run ls test mount. There we go. Okay, so now we've got test three showing up as a file, which is pretty sick. And probably, uh, I've, I haven't done any, like, filtering on the path, so probably if I do ls test mount test, we're just going to see the same thing. Oh, that's interesting. So now everything shows up as a file because the full path to this guy isn't slash test. It's slash test slash test, and so now they're files. Okay. And so if I, like, try to, like, cat one, uh, that's going to call... Oh, that worked. That's kind of interesting. 
I didn't expect that to work. What if I try to write something into it? So that's function not implemented, and he's calling get adder set adder. Okay. Um, I think let's. Oh shit! Sorry, flashbanging you. <laughs> um, let's just look at the rest of this example for their hello world. So they just implement like a read thing here, and they copy the contents into the buffer. Reasonable, open. I guess, uh, I see. So they either, they just, open is just a way for you to block access if you don't want them to access, so you can check if it's read-only or not, share, whatever. Nothing in here is too crazy. I think I, like, understand this enough. So, I'm not really worried about this anymore. It seems like this is, like, pretty straightforward to do what I want. I guess the only thing I want to understand is, uh, can I make sim links? in here uh so is there other examples in here that might have that oh i guess um it would just be by setting the attributes of the file to something else or maybe like sim links have the content in there uh hmm. how the fuck do sim links work sim links Linux fuse. How to make symbolic links in fuse. Uh, so they just make SIF link. Oh. Then you just put the target path during read link. Okay, yeah, yeah. So everything I need is like pretty straightforward. I'm not really too worried about it. Um, which means that we're kind of in a spot now where we can start de risking the other half. Uh, which is. Uh, figuring out what our database is going to look like. Uh, so what I'm imagining, what I'm imagining is a list of files. Let's see. Uh, we can say DB structure. I'm kind of imagining that we just have a folder of like files, make your files, and each one of these is going to have like basically by ID something in there, and each one of these is going to have like name, which is like the title of the thing, probably an ID in here for like a way to link back to uh, link back to the original or like link back to the ticket from like so each thing you're going to show the ID and the name in the folder. And if you then you can like retrieve the ID for any ticket from anywhere. That makes sense. Um, and then probably there's going to be like content. I don't know if I want this to be like forced as a markdown file or something, or if I would want like a folder of content where it could be anything, but it just happens to always be markdown files. I'll probably start with just uh, content.md. And we can always migrate later if we have to. It's not very hard. If you wanted to migrate later, it's easy peasy. Um, and is that it? Maybe I wouldn't even want ID and name in here. Maybe just name. ID is kind of like here already. I guess the reason that I want, I would want to keep name in here is so that even without the database, it's easy for me to like rip through files and just figure out stuff about the content. It seems like the database I kind of want to keep as like metadata or like relationships. So I could just make a little database here that basically says like stores all of the types of relationships that they could have as well as who is linked to who. Seems reasonable. Seems as well. I think probably the easiest thing for me to do is just start writing and kind of figure out where we end up. Uh, so let's say that I'm probably going to end up writing in Rust because that's my language of choice. Uh, where did I just go? What the hell? It was in to do FS. So let's get like the Rust stuff in here. So we need Rust up. Um, Rust Analyzer. 
And we're going to need, like, C bindings. So I need rust, ooh, rust platform bind gen hook, I think is what it's called. To get, like, bind gen working from my next shell, I think. We'll see if I got any of those wrong. Okay, looks like we're good. Cargo in it. Created a binary application. Sick. And cargo add RustQLite for database shit. Uh, what does that even... What does that give me, by the way? RustQLite depends on some, like, iterator stuff. SQLite sys, small vec. Yeah, okay, nothing crazy. Nothing crazy. Uh, let's just start making a database. So... Um, we have mod db, struct db, this guy's going to use rustqlite in some way, so we're going to have to look at, like, rustqlite docsrs, and what is my thing? Connection is, I have, like, a connection, I can execute stuff on him, then I have to, like, query him in some way, where do they, do, they like, query examples? Insert into select here. Uh, query. Okay, yeah. This is everything I need. This is everything I need. So it looks like I want RustQLite connection is the thing that my database is going to hold. Um, so we can say from Rust. Nope, not from. What is it in this language? Import? Use. <laughs> Been running too much Python. I've already forgotten. Uh, does this guy have any, like, lifetime associated with him? Nope. So here we say function new with some db path uh, is going to be, what, a path, probably? And he returns a db, which just will then have to say use std path path. And we say connection new from open. There, yeah, there we go. Open db path. And this is a our connection. Let's go this. And db connection. Okay. Uh, this is a result. For now, we just unwrap him and we fix the shit later. Eventually, I'll just ban unwraps and I'll have to go through and find all the spots that they have. But for now, since we're in prototype mode, we don't give a fuck. Crash no matter what. I don't give a shit. Um, so then in our main, we're going to want to like construct a db from the path, so um, std what env args is going to be uh, nth one, so somebody we're going to pass in the database path here db path let's equal to this and we create our db, so uh, use db db and then db new db path okay okay seems fine and we can just say what the fuck are you what are you drive db okay uh nope debug what am i saying drive debug for the db you know uh oops there's a bunch of arguments there because i control r something so let's just say we're going to open test.db um, private struct, sure, so we show a little pub, pub, uh, still doesn't like that because this is a string, so throw a little ampersand on this guy, still doesn't like it because and string doesn't coerce into path, so path from new, is this really what I have to do? I thought that this coerces nicely, but use stood path path. All right, changes to path new, okay. Uh, we have a linking error because we don't have SQL 3 so we just have to add that to the shell. Probably just SQL but we'll find out. We will find out. Okay. Um, cargo run. Cool, and we said cargo run with test db. Cool, so now we can probably see that there's test db generated here, but it's empty. Solid, solid, solid. 
Okay. So I guess our DB, he's probably going to be more than just the connection. He's going to be like uh, where all of our content is stored. That seems reasonable to me. And probably the connection to the database is just going to be like relative to that root path. So here we're actually going to change our DB path to... Um, Maybe we'll call this something slightly different. So, it's, yeah, DB path is fine. DB path is fine. Um, and we will just say now that our SQLite path is equal to DB path join. I don't know. What do we want to call this thing? Uh, metadata. Metadata.db. Sure. It's the metadata for all the files in our database. Uh, so db path is actually going to be a path buff now, an own thing, because we are storing it forever in ourselves. Cool. And I guess we are going to have to create the directory if it doesn't exist. So uh, if path exists, not does not exist, exists. We'll just say, if it doesn't exist, um, path, can we just like make dir, make dir, make dir rust, create dir, uh, std fs, uh, so we import fs here, yes, yes, fs create, uh, we just import fs and then we call fs create path, create dir. Yeah, path. And I guess, if I remember correctly, one of these fails if it exists, which you don't really give a fuck about. Um, errors. This function will return an error in the following situations. User lacks permissions. Parent path already exists. Okay. Uh, so can we just do creator all and then unwrap? And I think creator all is like, a, it doesn't fail if it already exists. Yeah, okay. We'll do it that way. Uh, yeah, okay, so Fargo run, and instead of test.db, we're going to store it as, like, test db, we'll call it. Um, in main, we need to upgrade this guy to a path buff, so I think we can just do as db path into, like this. Um, do you use a plugin and you can review the functions like that? I think that that's, uh, what am I, what am I using for that? I'm pretty sure it's built in, but I could be wrong. LSP or config, uh, nvim, init Lua. Uh, it's leader k. I'm just calling vim lsp buff hover. And I think that that's maybe, I don't know if like another plugin that I'm using is resulting in that popping up, but I think it's not. Yeah, I think that's just like any LSP has like a hover thing and I'm just pressing a button to pop it up. Um, he doesn't like th something. Oh, it's because I'm using this guy as an own thing, and I need to pass him as a reference over here and here. Okay. And this should actually open SQLite path. Okay. Target run. I say we have a path at test.db, test.db metadata, and here we have metadata db. Cool. Okay. So what are we going to be able to do on this guy? We're going to want to be able to like create item. I'm going to call them items because I think that there's it's very possible that when I finish building this thing, um, there will be no difference between a wiki and a ticket tracker. Like I think that there's a very good possibility that like it just ends up being the same thing. Um, calling it wiki is kind of hard, but like document storage. It's just kind of like general document storage. And maybe not even documents, right? We don't really know if it's going to get there. So I'm just going to say create item. We're going to call things items. And we're going to give it a name, which is going to be a stir. Okay. No, he doesn't return a DB. Am I fucking high? Uh, maybe he returns like the ID of the item. Maybe he returns nothing. Yeah, returning the ID seems reasonable. Does it? Because then I can, like, 
if I wanted to do something like uh, db create item new item, I would be able to say like let id is equal to this, and then maybe I want to be able to say like uh, db uh, add relationship uh, at for id, and then I could like put in like the relationship id here. See, it was reasonable, but I guess we won't know until we like create relationships. So for now, we'll just allow someone to create items. And when we need the ID later, we'll, we'll add it. Uh, so what's going to happen here? I guess our database is probably going to want to track. Does our database want to know about IDs? It has to, right? Uh, because he's going to store relationships between IDs and having those stuck in the database with him. I guess he doesn't really have to have them, but it's nicer than having to have to like look up on the file system which is which. Maybe. I guess it depends on if we want to store all metadata about items in the database, like their name and stuff, which seems maybe reasonable. I know before I said that maybe I want to like touch a file in the folder that says name, but maybe I don't want to do that. I want to store it in the database. That seems more reasonable. Sure. Okay. So let's start by, we'll request a new ID for a file from the database. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. So, which means our database has to have a, a lit table full of files. Um, so, which means that here, we're going to have to say create table... Ah, fuck. Create table. Oh, there's... We had an example somewhere. Uh, Russ Q Light. We can just look at what they typed here. Create table, person, ID, name. Yep. Yeah, okay, so this is kind of what I want. Create table, if not exists, I think is legal. Um, files. And they're going to have a integer primary key for the ID. What else are you going to have? Uh, name which is going to be a string, is string the right type, text. Uh, and there's, they say you can write not null there, that seems reasonable to me. Everything has to have a name. And that's probably all that I want there. Files, ID, and name. Eventually we, we might find that we want to upgrade that, but for now, that's good enough. Then we pass in empty list of parameters, sure. And uh, we unwrap in case this fails, which eventually we'll have to fix. But for now, we live it with we live with it this way, which means that here we should be able to insert into the database and get the ID back. So we should be able to say uh, self, which means that this guy has to have a self on him. Connection, execute, and he's going to say what? Insert into insert into files id he's not going to insert the id he's going to automatically generate one which i'm pretty sure that sqlite will do for me insert into files name values is question mark 1 and then then i just put a parameter in here which is name Okay, and we unwrap. And then uh, you can like ask for the last inserted thing. Yep. Uh, but this is kind of sketchy here because imagine that like two, two users of this are executing at the exact same time. All of a sudden we have a problem where like you could race to get the last row ID. So probably I'm just going to make this mutable. And uh, we'll just say that yeah, that's fine. I guess you could also do this as a transaction, and then you don't need to do that. You could just say, like, let transaction is equal to self dot connection transaction. And then hopefully the transactions... Ah, and then the transaction actually requires this to be mutable, which is sick. Okay, cool, cool, cool. And then we say uh, transaction execute and transaction last insert row ID transaction and then do I need to uh, do I need to commit this, or does it do it by itself? 
<clears throat> Transactions will roll back by default. Commit method to explicitly commit. Yeah, okay. Transaction commit. Unwrap. Okay. So here, this is the idea of the file. So you can say print. Uh, we actually just need to get it. So we say let ID is equal to this. And then we need to create that folder as well for the file. So we say uh, self path uh, ID. Join ID, I guess. Uh, what does this guy return? He returns an I64. I don't know if join will let me do that. Cargo check. Uh, yeah, as ref now path not implemented for I64. So here I probably just have to say what, uh, to string. Okay. And we'll say let item path is equal to this. And then we check if it exists. If item path exists, panic db failure. I guess we should actually just fucking return a fail. Fine. We will do error handling. Results the this and uh create item error. Fine. Uh, pub enum create item error, which is not really the best way to do these, but it's good enough because you're technically not supposed to expose everything about your errors in case you want to add more or you change the types or whatever. But fuck it, it's fine. Fuck it, fuck it, fuck it, fuck it. Um, so we'll just say item exists because we're not making a library, we're making an application, so we can leak as much as we fucking want. Uh, create item error, item exists, boom, and then here we say okay. And I guess while we're here, we'll fucking say, we'll f tackle the other ones. So we'll say, what, create transaction. Uh, no, I, you know, I'm not going to do this. Because we don't know if this is like, going to be how it work, looks at the end. So do, wasting all the time on error handling uh, doesn't matter. Okay, otherwise, we uh, fs create all item path. Uh... I guess we don't create dir all. We just create dir. Uh, and we unwrap here. And... Is that it? Yeah, it seems like it's probably it for now. Okay. Uh, sure. So let's then say that in main, we make this mutable and we say db create item test and test2 okay uh, this guy needs to derive debug for unwrap to work all right and we can cargo run this guy and we can look at what happened so we did end up with one and two and if we sqlite browser. Oh, fuck. I hit tab and it's going to freeze browser. Probably what we'll find is that we have two file IDs inserted there with the names test and test2. That's what we're hoping to see. Um, browse data. Sick. So we have one files table, test1 and test2. And if we run this again... Probably what we should see is we should see two more files created, three and four. But we should see IDs three and four with duplicated names. So nothing failed. Good. We see two new items, three and four. And if we open up SQLite browser, we should see three and four with test and test two. Okay, everything's working the way I expect. Um, which is good. Which is good. Which is good. Okay. So now... For now, we're kind of assuming, this is like maybe not a reasonable assumption, but for now we're assuming that every single f item is gonna come with a markdown file. Um, ah, maybe not. For now, we'll just leave it like this. We have like an empty directory that has a name. Great. And that should be enough for us to start trying to hook up the file system, right? The, at the very base level, our fuse file system can just map 
each item to its name and show it in a directory. That's like the simplest form of what we want. So we can say that we've started building our storage. It's fun. You can kind of, if you write start on a task, then it's, uh, you can finish it whenever you want. As long as you've typed any characters, you've started, which is pretty sick. Um, okay. So what are we trying to do now? We're trying to insert some initial data. Insert some initial data. Oh, we've done that too. That was kind of wrapped in with building out the initial storage. So we'll just kind of call that done as well. And then we will say that at 010530, we started trying to present, present, not pre preset, present in file system. Okay. So I guess what do we need to do here? We need to take all of that like fuse stuff that we did and we need to like hook it up to our Rust app. Um, let's kind of see what like the fuse bindings look like here. Somebody certainly has done this before and it's like, do I want to rely on this person's fuse wrapper or do I just want to roll it myself? I trust the SQLite one because I've used it before. Updated six years ago. So it's a good thing I checked. I don't trust that. Yeah, nothing in here is popping out as like the go-to. Whereas like if I search like SQLite, uh, I thought that RustQLite I get like, you know, massive downloads updated recently. Uh, anyways, okay, fuck it. Uh, I will just, is there like a sys package I should be using? Uh, libfuse sys. Ah, fuck it. I'll just roll my own. It's not a big deal. Not a big deal. Okay, so let's, you know, maybe get a little crazy here and get in it. Let's kind of checkpoint here. So we're going to add cargo lock cargo toml shell source. Nothing else in here matters. And we'll say uh, initial db in app. Okay. We're going to clean this up later. So not too worried about it. I just want somewhere so that when I inevitably fuck up, you know, that it's easy to jump back to a <laughs> place where everything was working. So let's make a build script that's going to generate our bindings for fuse. So what's he going to do? He's going to call bind gen. Which means that we need to check out the user guide. Um, create a build RS file. This is what I'm looking for. Yoikies. Yoinkies. By the way, I have good news I want to share. Who wants to hear it? Hey, I'll hear it, you know. You can always post it. And then, if we don't care, everyone will just ignore you. <laughs> but, <laughs> maybe it's something that's interesting to people. <laughs> uh, okay. Cargo, Tomo. Let's add as a, dev a build dependency. Um, build, I think. Bind gen. Nice. All right. So, tell cargo. So, we create a wrapper header that includes fuse.h. Oh, TS. It's my tree sitter thing is not working for headers. Is it like because CPP is also trying to run on the header parts there? And that's also fucking broken? That might be, might be why I'm getting these like fucking brutal errors. Yeah, there we go. Um, uh, all right, let's uh, maybe, let's, we don't have to do like, you know, plug religion and stuff in here. We can leave that for somewhere else. So uh, happy you're happy, but I'm just gonna say that maybe we keep that out of this chat, unfortunately. Um, let's pop out. Okay, so we had these, like, defines that we s specified for our sample application. Let's kind of, like, drop those in here. And probably when we, like, generate our bindings now, it'll automatically pull out the same versions of the functions that we used in this case. Um, 
we pull in our wrapper script and we add to the search path the path to the library, which we don't have to do because it's already automatically added to our linker flags. Hopefully, we'll see. And we probably also have to, eventually we'll specify that we need elib fees as well, but we'll find the error when that happens. Um, I don't care about any of this. Generate, expect, bindings, boom. Okay, so we include our wrapper and we can also then say our outpath here goes to the outputter. So we generate our bindings. Cool. All of that makes sense. We generate bindings for the wrapper. Um, include the generated bindings, which just involves a little bit of Rust bullshit. So we're going to edit source. And what's the next thing? We're going to call this what? Like fuse bindings. Source fuse bindings RS. Sure. That's where these will go. And we will call this fuse bindings RS. And in our build script, we will write to fuse bindings. Okay. So what should happen now is when we run our build, it should open up our like wrapper header, which only just has a thing that's like include fuse.h. It should like walk fuse.h and find all of the like functions and shit in them and like package them up in a way that Rust allows us to run them. So if I run like cargo build, let's hope. Hope it works. Cool, so nothing crazy happened. Um, and if we go into our outputs here, we should see fuse bindings generated, which is great. And in here, we should see all sorts of like defines for fuse shit, which it looks like we do. And so probably we should be able to then generate, like do the same thing that we did in our like test C file, uh, but we should be able to do it from the Rust side of things. So let's kind of see what that looks like. Uh, so we had our test.c, and we called this stuff. So this looks like a macro, which is going to be annoying. What does he do? Fuse args in it, he just passes in args the argv0, so that should be straightforward. Uh, let fuse args is equal to, I guess we need to mod fuse bindings. And I guess let's not, uh, we'll do it in main for now, but eventually this is going to end up in his own little wrapper, which is... Fine, yeah, it doesn't matter. Um, ah, fuck it, we'll make it that wrapper now. So we'll say edit source. Maybe we want the bindings to go into like a module. So we'll make dir here fuse. This will be a uh, touch mod rs, and then the bindings is gonna go here. And I don't know why I just tried to write in my file browser. Too much vim in my head, but that looks fine, okay. And then we can go to, uh, we say mod fuse. And then in our fuse mod rs, we then have like a struct fuse that we don't really know what this is going to look like yet, but we do know that we're going to want to at least create him. Uh, so we just say fuse like this for now, pub, uh, pub. And he's going to use the bindings. So he's going to say uh, mod fuse bindings. Uh, and how am I going to, like, imagine what this guy is? Calling him a generic fuse thing is not really what I want. I'm imagining this guy is, like, a web server, like, a client to my database. So maybe we'll just call this a uh, fuse client. And is he going to, like, just hold the DB directly? I don't, I don't know. We'll figure it out later. We will figure it out as we go. But for now, let's call him fuse client. That seems right to me. And we do know that we're going to want to... Construct some stuff, and then I guess we're going to want to run him forever, right? We know that, like, in our main over here, we ended up in this, like, fuse main loop. And so we'll just kind of say that, like, our client is going to have, like, some construction stuff, and then we can run him. Um, I guess you could, like, structure this as, like, a function. You don't really need this to be a struct if everything's just going to be in fuse main. But I guess you could maybe all of these, like, operations are going to be... They're, they're going to have, like, some state associated with them. Uh, I guess we'll start with a function and upgrade to a class if we need to. So we'll just say what pub function run fuse client. And he's going to create those fuse args. Our 
we're gonna, what is it? Fuse args. And we looked at what that macro did and he just set everything to zero. We, he passed in argc argv. So here we're gonna say what are args. Usually C bindings in Rust are called sys and distributed as a separate crate called blah sys in the same crate with mod folds. Yeah, I like understand that, but I don't really understand uh, why I would go through that effort of making my own a new sys crate when I can just stick the bindings in my application directly. It's not like I'm like, shipping a library that's like libfuse that's a wrapper for fuse sys it's just like i'm like using fuse in my application so i'm not really too worried I, I, i'm i'm not sure if i'm missing a reason why that like matters that much you know um we're gonna make an r take some args they're gonna be strings um and we're going to collect them into a vector i guess so this is going to be a vector of string and that way we have like an argc and argv we can pass to this guy. So argc is going to be args len. Argv is going to be, uh, he probably wants like a star, he probably wants like a double pointer to like a car. I mean, you can just put your bindings in create fuse sys. Yeah, sure. I can call this sys instead of fuse bindings. Yeah, that's fine. That is, I guess, a little bit closer to the real world. Cool. Um, and then we can call these sys. And it is a little bit nicer to use. Um, okay, so we have args.len uh, as i32. I guess we should just say try into unwrap in case we have, like, a million arguments. Not that it fucking matters, but... That way at least we'll crash instead of just uh, truncating our values. Um, so argv, he wants car star star argv is like the usual thing, which means that we need to convert these from Rust strings to C strings. So args, I guess that means that each of these guys is going to be a C string like this, which means that we need to use std fi C string. And here we can map each string uh, to C string, C string. There's got to be like a from S, which probably means I can just write C string from in here. He cannot convert from string to C string. How the fuck do I do that? C string rust. How do I make him out of... Oh, new, 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 new. I see, I see, I see. Uh, he still doesn't like that. Let's, let's cargo check and see a better error message. Value type of XC string cannot be built from iter of item results. Okay, fine, fine. Fine, we'll throw a little unwrap on here. There we go. So we have our arguments. <clears throat> uh, now we can... Uh, I think you need to like leak these guys into pointers now if I want them to be used directly as pointers. As pointer. I can say as pointer, but they have to be mutable pointers probably. I guess we'll try. So we'll say uh, args is equal to args iter map s s as pointer and then we collect again so we have a vec of const i8 now which means that we should just be able to pass this guy directly into our fuse args as args as pointer yeah 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 yeah, yeah. and then allocated these other fields was just zero in that macro they want double mute, which fucking sucks, which means that here we're going to have to actually do an args into iter, take ownership, leak it. How do I get star mute i8 here into raw? Leak them, leak them and smeek them. And then here, this is like as mute pointer. Uh, found mute cons, this is mute here. Boom, everybody's working, cargo check, we build. Cool. So now we have our argument struct and we go back to our hello world or our test function, I guess. We had test.c. We can look at this guy again. 
And then we call fuse opt parse. Fuse opt parse. And here we pass in args and std pointer null everywhere else. Uh, std pointer null, std pointer null. Wonderful. Uh, unsafe, because calling in C is spooky, you know? Uh, this only has one L on null, types different mutability, option. Oh, one of these expects an option, because when they do function pointers, they wrap them with uh, options instead of pointers. So it's this last one. This last one is a none. Uh, they expected a mutable fuse arg. So this guy has to be mutable. This guy has to be mutable. And all of these guys actually have to be null mute as well. All right. So probably we've parsed arguments now. So we'll say let ret is equal to this, and if ret equals negative one, uh, I guess we'll just panic for now. Failed to parse fuse args. Fine, 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 fine. And then we call fuse main, sys fuse main, fuse main, which they only have fuse main real. Is this like a fucking macro? Yeah, it is, all right. So he's just the same, except he passes in size of. Okay, sure. So we have uh, we have args, arg c, args, arg b, op, which is our hello opper. Hello opper. Can I put this here? Yeah, I can. I can just say what const hello opper is a sys fuse operations uh, like this. We'll comment this out for a second while we figure this out. Uh, this guy doesn't have like dots like this. It's these colons is what he expects. Uh, which means that we need to put hello adder for now. But I don't really want to do that. I just want him to be zeroed out initially. Uh, sys fuse operations. Oh, fuck. I have to zero him. Okay. Can we make like a generate fuse op const function generate fuse ops? He returns a sys fuse operations. And then we just call std mem zeroed and unsafe. I don't know if this is like. Is this one of those ones where like Rust is gonna do some like stupid fucking shit here? Returns a value of t represented by the all zero. Blah blah. blah. There is no guarantee that an all zero byte pattern represents a valid value of such type t, but from this we know it does. This is the same effect as maybe on it zeroed. Assume in it. It is useful for FFI sometimes, but should generally be avoided. Okay, this is FFI, so I'm not worried about it. Uh, and maybe I can just write std mem. Uh, we say generate fuse ops here. And that seems fine. Cannot call non const function. Fuck! <laughs> Why is this not const? Oh, oh man. Is there. Is the maybe on init thing const? Uh, is the trait default implemented for sysfuse operations? I assumed no, but. Yeah, no. Fuck. Fuck, fuck, fuck. Um. Is there like const function in here? Const function zero. Okay. And assume init. Is this also const? Oh yeah, okay. So we can just use the maybe init version. Thank God. Uh use std std mem maybe on init. And then here I should be able to say maybe you can tell bind gen to generate a default impl. Maybe, but like, how would it know what the default is? I'm okay with if this works, I'm having fun with it, but we'll, we will loop back if it doesn't. Zeroed, assume, init. Okay. So this should work at const time. <laughs> Fuck. Zeroed is not, not stabilized. 
Fuck me. Uh, wait, but it, I didn't see a warning on there. Oh, since one seven five, so I can probably just rust up update stable, and then it'll work. Maybe. Maybe, maybe, maybe. What colors are those? Sorry, I forgot to answer that. Um, GitHub dot files repo is kind of strange. Oh, <laughs> okay. So I forgot that I actually had that. So I was at some point using GitHub as a way to store encrypted content. So I was using like some git repo um some like git repo auto encryptor with like a gpg key which is kind of funny but uh anyways color scheme is we we discovered this recently that uh my term colors in neovim is off and i think that we were using sono kai is the color scheme and it just doesn't look like what's in here because i have term colors off uh but yeah, I think this is just like a that's just copy pasted from uh something. Visual Studio code, maybe. Uh it's not it is stable, just not as a const function. I think it's stable as a const function as of Rust 1.75, so I should be able to do this. I don't know what the fuck is taking so long here. What is it doing, man? Oh my god. Hurry up. What is it even doing? It's, it doesn't even say it's downloading anything. Is it just like railing my disk? <laughs> Why the fuck is Kwin just using like 100% of a CPU? What the fuck is it doing? Why is all software like this? Ah, uh, okay. What's your terminal emulator? 16 bit colors? I thought you said Kaylin. No, no, no. I wouldn't do that. Um, okay. So, what are we doing here? Uh, I don't I don't know if my terminal is 16-bit. I assume so, but I don't know. I don't know. Uh, what was I doing? I was trying to see if this compiles now. Now that I have updated Rust. So, we have to take a second here to let it check all of the crates with the new version. There we go. Okay, we compile now. Cool. So we have a zero dot thing. And I guess uh, what we're going to end up doing here is we're going to say let ops is equal to this. And we're going to return ops. And we're going to start filling in ops in here. But we'll handle that in a second. First, we want to make sure that we get this right. So what was his arguments here? It was op, op size, user data. Okay. So we have ops is hello opper. Uh, and then size of... size of val hello hopper and then null i guess for now for our user data although eventually that will become very relevant and useful and we should be able to go to main now and say uh fuse run fuse client and we should now see that we create our database and then start making a file system so if we cargo run uh Shit, we pass arguments. We pass an argument for us, which is separate from what Fuse is expecting. So for now, we're just going to skip this. And we're going to hard code the DB path just for now. We'll have to figure this out eventually, but we don't have to right now, which is great. Um, expected const Fuse operations found Fuse operations. So we need to cast this guy to a pointer. A little ampersand. And otherwise, it looks like we run. So now we can say that we want to mount something on test mount. Cargo run. And we can pass with like debug test mount. And hopefully this will just do what we did before with our fuse stuff. And we will be in like the same state where we have like uh, something fucked up. But undefined reference to fuse opt parse. So we need to tell Rust to link to uh, our speci specified library. So or like here we go. Cargo rust c link lib. We need to put this in our build script. And we just say print line this thing, and we should say equals fuse. Now it should know to link to fuse, and everything should work. Wait, don't you update Rust using Nix? Uh, I could, but uh, I just happen to use Rust up generally because Nix is like sometimes a little bit behind the latest and greatest, and like I don't get like the ability to run nightlies from 
the Nyx one without doing some like extra hacks, so I just use Rust Up, even though it's not the Nyx way. Bad mount point. Test mount, no such file or directory. So uh, I guess it was here for test mount, I guess. Okay, cool. So we're running Fuse again, but from Rust now. And now if I say ls test mount, I expect function not implemented, and we have to do the same shit where you implement get editor, set editor, etc. Um, but now we're going to have to implement it uh, as a view into our database. So what does that look like? What does that look like? Fuck, this like search thing is showing like every single file in target. So let's just quickly make a little git ignore there. Uh, git status. Uh, we should probably also... Actually, I think that's fine. Target's the thing that we want to ignore for us. But for, or like, officially, but I also happen to know that I have test db that I also want to ignore. Okay, and we remove test.db, rm test, we don't need that anymore. Uh, rm.rdb structure, don't need that. And source test db also can go away. Okay, there we go. So now when I open NVIM and I hit my, like, search all files, it doesn't, like, search a bunch of build outputs. Wonderful. Um, and we want our Fuse stuff to now represent the database in some way. So what's that going to look like? What's that going to look like? We're going to have some sort of state, right? He's going to have the DB associated, like, access to the db in some way maybe he's going to own him maybe he's going to be a reference to him um maybe he's going to be a shared reference to him we'll just say that he owns him for now and uh in the future we might decide that that doesn't make sense but for now it's fine for now it's fine and now we're kind of back we're in this state where we might actually want to run as like a member of this guy because uh no maybe not we'll see we'll see we'll see um so he's gonna say he's gonna have like some stuff on him right like what's he gonna want to do he's gonna want to be able to uh list all items get items because like if we want to list the directory we're gonna have to list the directory let's start by just listing all items flat at the top um and so he's gonna return what i like some sort of like iterator over items just like we'll call it like a fuse item for now i don't know i guess it depends on what like the database look what the database returns so let's look at the database and so we have like a way to like create items and so here i guess we're gonna have to have a way to iterate items it's gonna take in a reference to self and he's going to return an iterator of items equal to db item, I guess. That makes sense. What the fuck is a db item, though? Uh, is it, Are we just going to iterate IDs, or are we going to return, like, a thing? If we did return a thing, what would it be? Um, it would just be the item. The item's path, as well as his metadata. So, his metadata is right now only his name. So I guess we will just say that we have a pubstruct db item. Are you using SQLite? Yeah. Yep, yep, yep. Some weird combo of SQLite and file system right now. So here, I guess our db item is going to have a path to the item as well as his name. Um, and so I guess we are going to say this is an imp literator. Actually, we don't we don't really care what the type is we just know that we're going to iterate them and we're gonna to have to write like make a transaction i guess we don't really need a transaction this is just gonna be one execution no insertion so we can just say self connection execute select uh star i don't really like writing select star i don't know if it's like typical for people to not like it but i don't like it because i feel like if I add a field later, then like my output's gonna have like a weird format that I don't expect. So I want ID and name from from. You have to you have to yell everything in SQLite. Everything is big letters. 
Although it doesn't actually matter for SQ Light. I don't know. It's every everything I've ever read. Um, they put them in caps, but I don't really know why. It just seems like extra holding shift and extra extra wrist strain to me. But you know, whatever. So we say select star, like select ID and name from files. Is there anywhere on here? No, we just want all of them. Um, and our parameters are nothing. And then, because developers yelled in the eighties, <laughs> yeah, they were all really, they really had to yell to get their points across to get heard. Um, okay, so this SQLite. Uh, where is this example? RustQLite docs rs. Same for other languages. Yeah, I guess like I've seen that in like basic, and I think for is Fortran a yelling language? Yeah, Fortran's also a yelling language. Uh, okay, so you prepare a statement, and then to get the data from it, you run the statement query map. So statement, what does this guy have on him? Do I have to like get everything at once? I see. So I query. Due to life flight administration, the rows handle return by query does not implement the iterate trick. Consider using query map or query and then instead which do. Okay. So this returns a bunch of mapped rows. Okay, sure. That seems reasonable. So this is prepare. I'm going to prepare a statement. Which I imagine probably maps to some like compilation of SQLite to something else under the hood. I don't actually know. But I, I can't see why else this would be like a separate step. Mute statement. You can tell I haven't ever used SQLite directly because I don't know what the fuck is, is going on. Uh, okay, so then we get the rows, which is a query map of nothing. I have nothing in my, my query, and uh, for each row, I'm going to say row get... I'm going to turn each thing into a DB item, I guess. DB item. And my name is going to be row get zero. And my path is going to be self.path.join with the ID. So here should say uh, row.get0. Probably has to be on, uh, we'll see, uh, to string. I think we need uh, here row equal, uh, what is this thing? Row, does he say? Unknown. Query map. Statement in this not found because it's supposed to be statement. I spelled the whole word. This has to be a result. Okay. Try adding a comma. Okay. Use the question mark operator. Unwrap. Oh, I guess I can just uh, put a question mark if this supports it. Uh, consider specifying the argument. So this should be a... Uh... Oh, interesting. So I guess we say let ID is an i64 is equal to row dot get zero question mark and then here I can say ID to string like this this guy has to say unwrap because I haven't implemented any error handling yet and then can I just return rows expected mapped rows to be an iterator that yields this what does mapped rows yield if not Oh, he re he yields results. I see. Does this guy does query map have to return function has to return result? Okay, so for now, because I'm being a lazy bitch, we'll just say map x x unwrap or result unwrap like this. Why does he like that? Cargo check. Why does he like that? Mm, I don't understand. S, X, X, unwrap. Am I high? Why? Should that not be okay? Oh. No, yeah, I think that should work. I feel like I'm missing something. No method unwrap found. Oh, I see. I've got them in the wrong order. I've got them in the wrong order. Hidden type captures lifetime that does not appear in the bounds. So I guess we can just say, can I just say plus this? Okay. Cargo check. 
statement is barred here, returns a value referencing data owned by the current function. So statement is owned by the current function. So I can't return an iterator over things related to statements. So I just have to collect them into a vector before returning them. Sure, that's fine. That's fine. So vec thing is this and into iter here. There we go. No, not there we go. We're close though. Fuse mod or RS. Now this being called fuse is kind of weird, um, but it is what it is. I'm gonna have to change that name later. I don't like it, but for now we're gonna say use create db db. Because now this isn't just like a generic fuse thing, right? This is like our specific fuse implementation of a wrapper around our database. So it's kind of fucking weird, but whatever. This needs to be public. Um, we say pub. No, no, it doesn't. This does not need to be public. So before we do anything now, I guess here we create our fuse client. Yes, yes, client is the fuse client. And he is going to take in the DB which means that here we need to pass in the db, which takes in a db. Then our, our main function as our user data thing is going to take in a pointer to that client. Um, as I think you have to do like a double cast here. So you can say this y1 probably has to be mutable because c wants everything to be mutable. So you say this guy takes turns into a mute fuse client as mute c void and here we can use std ffi c void and i think that should line up nothing there should complain at me as long as here i pass in the db and i'm going to stop creating extra test and test twos because that's going to cause problems okay so now 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 we have to create that like get adder function which will let us um iterate the directory and print the contents print something so let's see that should be pretty straightforward so we need to create a new function that matches the signature of get etter boom so we can just copy paste uh boom boom this guy needs a name so we'll call him uh Fuse client get adder. Okay. And he takes in, this is the path and this is the stat buff, as we discovered earlier. And he returns c int, which uh, we will include here. Okay. And now we just have to implement him. But for now, let's just write print line hello from fuse client get adder. So that we can make sure that we are hooking everything up right. And then we return zero. Uh, this is needs to come from sysstat. Boom. And uh, I do want to just say C car here as well. Car, char, car, char. One of the two. I don't know. Fuck it. Uh, okay. So now when I run this guy, we should be able to ls test mount. And we should see... We don't see the print because we didn't put him in the ops. So ops get adder is equal to sum fuse client get adder. I think that'll work. Consider giving ops an explicit type. Fine. Sys fuse operations. And it looks like that still compiles, which is actually like pleasantly surprising. Hello from fuse client get adder. Okay, so things are hooked up right, which is sick. That is sick. So now we need some way to get the user data, which um, is kind of confusing to me because like fuse main is saying that he takes user data, but I don't see the user data passed in to the fuse client, which is, or to like this get adder function. So either the user data is only like accessible in very specific places, in which case uh, we have to like make a global variable with a mutex around them, or there's like some function we can call that'll give them to us. So lib fuse user data. Let's see if there's an example somewhere. User data, user data, user data. Where the fuck? 
here, maybe this example will have it. User, da user data, user data, user data. I don't understand. So do they use the user data anywhere? I know it's like there's, okay, what if we look at the documentation for fuse main? Lib fuse docs. Data structures, main page, files, file list. This is coming from hello.c will call fuse main and we can here then see initial data for the private data field of the struct fuse context. Okay, okay, so somewhere we must be able to get the fuse context. Maybe. But maybe overridden by the struct in the init handler. Okay, sure. Fuse operations. No, not fuse operations. Sorry, what am I looking for? Fuse context. Ah! Fuse get context. Okay, okay, okay. So we should have something like uh, fuse sys fuse get context. Let context equal this. And they said it was a private data field. So we're going to say context private. Uh, we have to dereference this guy probably. Private data. Yes. As fuse client. Yes, 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 yes. And then we should be able to say let client is equal to a mutable reference to the dereferenced client. And then we should be able to say print line our client. And if we derive debug here, hopefully we then find out that uh, the stuff that we get back here is the same stuff in our database. That's the hope. So when I want to test mount, we get a fuse client with a database at the path test DB with a connection to the metadata database. Let's go! Let's go. Okay, so we have access to everything we need here uh, to be able to iterate the database. We can say client db iterate items for db item in. Is this the right syntax for this language? It is. Wow. I actually was kind of surprised. Um, then what do we do in our like hello world thing that we did before? Our little like test function here. Uh, we, oh, we just have to say that we are a directory. That's all we have to do for this function, actually. So here we can just say, for now, we'll just say everything's a directory unconditionally. So we'll say stat buff, uh, st mode is equal to sys s i have dir, uh, is the octal in Rust more sane of a prefix? Uh, zero B, zero X, octal? Control at, why do you like octal? Ah, see, okay, so this is like way more reasonable to me, right? Zero O for an octal just makes a ton of fucking sense. And just having it be zero with nothing is like insane. Okay, so this is 755 for uh, read executable, read write executable, read executable, read executable, if I remember correctly. Um, otherwise, we just call this day, and then we have to implement read there. So here, they fuse client read dir, read dir, which according to this, uh, I'm going to copy paste from uh, this guy here because it's going to be in Rust for Oh god, in Rust format already. So we copy, paste, delete, delete. This comes backwards, and then we say fuse client reader. We delete a bunch of these prefixes because uh, we want them to be somewhat readable. Then we just create our function. And we need to specify our arguments here. So this is path buff filler offset and info. Okay. Uh, we didn't use info. We didn't use offset. We did use filler and buff. Okay. So we're going to get our database. 
So we say let client is equal to uh, sys fuse get context uh, dot private dot uh, we have to say context is equal to this context private data as mute fuse client is our thing. So client is this, and then we say let client is equal to client. Like we convert them into a usable thing like this. Cool. And then we say for db item in client db iterate items. Yes, we are close. Um, we say we're going to create a directory for that. So filler uh, takes in buff the name. So we're going to say let name is equal to client dot name. No, I, db item name, sorry. Um, and we have to convert this guy into a C string. And we probably have to clone this guy. Uh, he doesn't like that he's a private field, so we're just going to pub these for now. Bad abstraction, but whatever, we live with it. Um, we have the name now. So we should be able to say here that the name is name as to name how do i get the pointer from this again am i high i thought that it was just like as pointer or something c string c string um star const i8 as pointer yeah so what the fuck is the problem here as pointer oh because i have to unwrap this guy right 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 Right, 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 right. And then what else went to this filler again? What else? Uh, a stat buff, which we were going to say is null for now, because it said that was allowed, if I remember correctly, and zero. Um, and here we have to say let filler is equal to filler as mute unwrap, so that we get the function out of him, because he's an option right now. Uh, you might have meant to return this value. Why the fuck would I? Okay, filler needs to be mutable. Uh, okay. Okay, so maybe that will just give us all of the things in there. Uh, oops. So if I ls test mount, we should see, fuck, function not implemented. Which function is not implemented? Reader. Because we didn't add him. We didn't add him to the list of things that we support. Reader has to come from Fuse Client Reader. Yes. We compile and we run again. And then we ls and we see. Did we get the... Fuck. Um, SQ light failure. Ooh, that's kind of fun. We panicked at 59 in DBRS. That's actually not at all expected for me. I thought we did this right. Oh, because we maybe wrote our prepare, we wrote our SQLite thing wrong. Select, I think it's because I put brackets here and I'm not supposed to. Um, U mount test mount. We run this again. LS test mount. Boom, baby. Sick. Um, okay, so I'm just gonna like go into the database and change the names so that we don't have duplicates. It's actually kind of funny. I didn't expect this to allow duplicates to work. Um, but we can go, oopsies, I wanted to go into SQLite browser, test db, edit my metadata, and just change some of these names so that they're like, uh, test three, hello, how do I edit this? Three, there we go. Test four. Test, test five, and... Test six. And then do I have to save this? Right changes, nice. So now if I run this again, and ls test mount, test, test two, test three, test four, test five, test six. Solid, okay. We kind of just did like a little bit of a buzzer beater there. We're at an hour and 54 minutes. I try to cap these guys at two hours or else I think that the videos on YouTube are too long. Two hours seems to be like a little bit of a good balance there. 
Um, and I think that we did accomplish what we wanted to accomplish. We have um, some stuff in a database uh, that kind of represents something for us. All it has right now is IDs to names. So we have files that exist on the file system. They have names. And we can now present those in our Fuse file system. We've like read the database from Fuse in Rust. Uh, we've extracted all of the names and we've presented them in the file system. Now, we're not quite at the point where this is usable in some way, but uh, it's a good starting point. So I think I'm happy to call it there. I think that that's like pretty good progress for one stream. And I think what's up next is going to be, we're gonna have to actually like, when we look at the contents of those folders, we're gonna have to map those back to the actual contents of the real folders and maybe add in some like extra like metadata things in there. Um, but yeah, I think this is a good starting point. So thanks for watching guys. If you liked what you saw, I stream most days at around one or two o'clock Pacific time for around one or two hours. Uh, if you're watching on Twitch and you're like, fuck, I don't wanna like watch you live cause you're boring. Uh, I want to fast forward. There's a YouTube link in the Twitch description where VODs go up. And if you're watching on YouTube and you want to come yell at me and tell me to do something better, um, there's a Twitch link in the YouTube description. You can pop by at one or two o'clock Pacific time and, you know, send me some messages in chat. Um, if you want to chat about projects, whatever, coding, shoot the shit, um, there's a Discord link in the Twitch description. I have, like, an announcements channel in there where I post where I'm gonna, when I'm going to be going live a little ahead of time. So if you, like want that notification that's where it goes um otherwise i think that's it thanks for watching catch you on the next one bye